Mr. Okay. Garrison, you say that okay. you believe that the the change in our country would come uh, from some transformation in the heart done by yes. God, and yet you propose to burn the Constitution and say things that are, are insightful and to free all these people. Don't you think that there is going to be some degree of hate? I mean, what are we supposed to do? Are we supposed to just pray slavery out of existence? How do you propose to do this without war? And what do you propose to do with, with the Negro once once he's free. I mean, what's to keep the white man from slaughtering him? Well, hopefully what would keep anyone from slaughtering anyone? That it is a sin. We have to change, I agree, we have to change the entire climate, north and south, within the souls of our people. God has given us this mission. God has given us the ability to change. We've done it before. We must do it now. It is the only way to save us from violence. And I must say, I'm despairing because here we are and F Fort Sumter and the firing and the killing has already started. And God, Jefferson also had it right, another great time for Jefferson, when he said that God will not be stilled permanently. On this issue, God's vengeance will be seen. And it's up to us if we can act to head it off by changing, by proselytizing, by speaking the word of God to everyone over and over until they understand, until they accept it in their soul. That is what we must do. But I agree with you. Sadly, ominously, it looks as though violence may be God's choice because we've been so wicked for 200 and some years and have continued this state and have debated it for 200 and some years and done nothing about it. We must end it now or else this violence will come, and it will be a wicked, wicked time. There are some saying already that if the South goes away, we can fight a, a small war, that it will be over in a month. They're wrong. The evil is too deep. God's vengeance will not be satisfied that easily. We must either change our hearts or God will. Yes, ma'am. Yes, Mr. Garrison. I hope um, that answered your you question. You seem to equate being an American with being a good Christian. And I'm wondering, I'm wondering what would you, how would you address the, the small percentage of the population that is not Christian, such as those of the Jewish faith? As to? As to your issues in, in abolishing slavery. There's whatever, some, whatever church they might be of, whatever denomination, whatever faith we might have in this country, the basic test is the morality of slavery. That is why, now some have said I have attack the Methodist Church and the Baptist Church, but I attend the African Methodist churches in Boston, in the community where I live. I live on the edge of the colored community in Boston, the free people of color. And I attend their churches over the white churches because the white churches are not pure enough. Any church, any faith that declares against the immoral evil of slavery is living up to Christian principles even if they don't believe them directly. Does that answer your question? Yes, except that I think you, would, you, might, you might want to broaden your, your view to include or embrace uh, those who do not um, believe in a, a, the Christian example of morality, but I can understand what I'm your not point as worried is. about this small group. It is the vast, overwhelming majority of I Christians. See and their apathy, that is my issue. Okay, thank you. Yes, ma'am, you have been very patient. <laughs> Madam, please. Um, we'll try to get some others, I think. In history this year, we learned about the Jewish Compromise, and it said that it included one, black, um, one white man, one black man, and one Indian, and three into the slave. Oh, oh, in total, if you look at it, yes. yeah, at the Constitution. You Absolutely. Well, I would strike out any clause. You're right. It's infested. This idea is slavery as well. You are going to an area which I hope we will address. As I said at the end, this is a question of human rights. You're leaving out women. Women are not in the Constitution. Women are granted no rights and privileges. You have one white man no Indians and three-fifths of a Negro as citizens. I would make it one white man, 
one Indian, one Negro, one female of all races. So everyone is represented. The hardship is still today that they're still on reservations. I agree. I agree. They're shooting them wholesale out in the western areas of this country. Are there other questions? I thought I saw another hand. Yes, sir. And then I'll jump over here to the you too. Okay. So here, and then that one, that one. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, in a democracy, the majority can sometimes be wrong, even select the evil. What we have the document to yeah. prove it. What form of government do you propose that would eliminate that problem? There's only one form of government that's possible, a democracy. That is what lives up. Our, our Declaration of Independence has it absolutely correctly. The rights of all men to life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. All men should have a voice in the government. There is, there is nothing wrong with the idea of democracy and what 80% of that document is about. But as long as that document includes slavery and intolerance and racism, the document must be destroyed. We've waited too long for this gentleman's solution of an amendment. It's been 200 years. How much longer do we wait? Just eradicate it. Let's start again. Hopefully we can use the basic framework. So democracy, that is the, the government we should have. Uh, we have the government now, it's just not working up to its ideals. Yes, madam, I'm sorry. Um, you use the Christian message to support your argument, but you haven't... It's not to support my argument, madam. It is my argument. It is the word of God is what I speak. Okay. Um, in the Bible, in the New Testament, the reference to uh, slavery is St. Paul who counsels not against slavery, but counsels the slave to be obedient. How do you reconcile that? I think that is slaves, I think it's taken in the same spirit. I counsel slaves today to be obedient in the sense that they should not take violent action. If they wish to flee, I will absolutely support them. But I believe that that passage is talking about the obedience of a slave to be nonviolent. That is how I envision it. 